Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Matthew chapter 8 verse 6 to chapter 1 verse 7 and Exodus chapter 8 verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord for another day. Lord God bless this word. Help us to have wisdom, insight, and understanding. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Matthew chapter 8 verse 6. Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. All right. And so this is the centurion. He has come to Jesus um, on behalf of his servant, right? He had to, he had to have a good relationship with that servant in order to, to do this right for him. And he, he went to the Christ. He went to Jesus. The sub, the serve the other servants didn't take him to Jesus or go to Jesus. The master went to Jesus, right? And this master was a a Gentile, right? And so he went to Jesus on behalf of his servant. And that was love. It was faith. He did it in faith because remember Christ didn't even have to go to the place he he healed him from a distance, right? Because that's what the man believed that he could do. And so um, here, this this actual verse is also a reflection of the way Christ advocates for us, right? When we are under the care of the master, he will advocate to the father for our well-being. He will go to the father on our behalf, right? And, and here, the servant was lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly right he could have just called another servant to do his job or or whatever but there was obviously relationship there to where he cared for that servant and he wanted that servant to be healed right he wanted that servant to not be in pain he wanted that servant to be whole again right and so that's what Christ does for us he causes us to be whole again he causes us to to have a mediator in the heavenly realm between the father god and us he is that mediator and so when the servant was lying home paralyzed the master went out to advocate for him from the one who could heal. And so God is the one who can deliver. God is the one who can cover us. God is the one who can set us free. And he does it through his son. His son mediates for us. He's like a lawyer, right? He's he's the one who is going to be able to, to help us in our distress right? When that wrath is being poured out, he's going to be that covering. He's going to advocate for us. We're going to come to know the true meaning of salvation during that time, right? And so God is doing this for us. Let's look at the second verse, Jude chapter 1 verse 7. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulge in sexual immorality and pursue unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing an punishment of eternal fire. All right. And so this is speaking about um, when Jude here is speaking about when people who were with God turn away from God. Right. And so here um, he was talking about um, the children of Israel that that came out of Egypt with him and some of them fell away. Right. And so those were, were let go. They were punished. Right. But those who stayed with God were under that blessing. And so it's the same with us. We want to stay with God. Don't turn away from God. Don't walk away from him. Right. It says just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality. So they went the wrong way. Right. They just because they were near Sodom and Gomorrah, they didn't have to participate in that. And yet they chose to go in that direction because that that city was doing that same thing. It says just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued 
include unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. So they were all in association with one another. And if you associate yourself with the enemy, if you turn away from the true and living God, the one who can advocate for you, the one who has sent his son for you, um, when that wrath is being poured out, you better duck right? You're going to catch it too, because you have chosen to walk away from the covering. You have chosen to um, not allow the advocate to advocate for you. God wants us to stay with him. It doesn't mean that trouble and trials won't come, right? But he's going to advocate for us when they do right? He's going to be there for us. He's going to seek for our wholeness. He's going to bless us. Don't associate yourselves with those who are going in the other direction, right? Because when you align yourself with them, when that destruction comes, you're going to be with them, right? Let's look at the third verse, Exodus chapter eight, verse three, the Nile shall swarm with frogs that shall come up into your house and into your bedroom and on your bed and into the houses of your servants and your people and your ovens and your kneading bowls. Wow, that's gross, right? Like that, those frogs were everywhere in Egypt, everywhere except for Goshen, right? God shows us through this plague and and through these unclean things frogs represent unclean spirits right and an infestation there's an infestation that is going on in the spirit but guess what those who are under the righteous covering of christ those who are being advocated for by christ they are being maintained by the father right? They are in a, a Goshen situation, right? You could be right in the midst of the enemy's camp and yet God is maintaining you. God is keeping you. God is watching over you. He has you entrenched, right? He has you, you in a place of covering to where you're not being harmed, right? Look at this, this Goshen situation, right? Even when the plague of darkness came, it was dark everywhere except for Goshen. How about that, right? That, that is the God of miracle signs and wonders, right? It said these swarms of frogs were everywhere. They were touching everything and making everything unclean. And, and when the Pharaoh was talking to Abraham, you know, and Abraham, you know, was like, okay, we're going to pray that these frogs go away from you and your people. Right. And, and we're going to, you know, cause this plague to stop. Um, you know, he wasn't talking about the children of Israel. He was talking about Egypt, the king and his servants and their people right? It it wasn't, it wasn't the children of Israel. And so God is going to keep those who are associated with him. He's going to watch over. He's going to advocate for his people, right? When that wrath is poured out, you want to be with God. You want to be under his righteous covering. You want to be under his hand. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that you didn't say that the plagues wouldn't come. You didn't say that, you know, this this great storm of wrath wouldn't be poured out. But you said that you would be there for us. You would be our salvation. You would cover us. You would advocate for us. We say thank you. We stay under this covering, Lord God. We're not going to come out from under it. Keep us, guide us, protect us, help us to stay with you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.